Hello again. Um, so I've decided that we are going to consider moving on to a new project, discussing another subject of profound importance in mathematical physics and pure mathematics as well. Uh, and that is the notion of Lie groups and Lie algebras. The reason I'm beginning this project is because I just kind of noticed that our general relativity series has gone up to 50 lectures. And that's cool. I'm totally happy with that. I really love the content. I've gone back and looked at it. But I've also noticed that the number of the viewers that are following are now somewhere between 300 and 400 per episode. And it's pretty clear that the subject matter is getting increasingly esoteric. And there's a lot of stuff we haven't covered, of course. I mean, I've, I've, gone in, I've allowed myself to get into such excruciating detail about certain things that I always felt were kind of confusing or left uh, unaddressed. For example, the vial tensor was the last place we left off there. The, and, and that is an important thing to understand. But in elementary GR, you don't usually attack it. But I don't like leaving these things behind. I like uh, having a, little, a bit of a full-throated um, uh, understanding of everything. And so I've allowed the lectures to sort of go in that direction. I really uh, went deep and long into the study of geodesics. And I even left a few things undone there. I think I promised that I would do uh, the, uh, I would come up with a uh, position in space as a function of time, as a function of proper time, or as a function of uh, coordinate time, which is a very, very complex uh, mathematical expression and uh, but it can be derived and we are you know in the, it becomes a pure mathematical exercise at that point but it's the idea is to finish right is to go from uh, a, uh, a metric right a metric all the way to a path in space-time and we we did a lot of that and we certainly showed how it worked for the Schwarzschild geometry to do it for the Kerr geometry would be just glorious and um, uh, and an ambitious project, which I am actually working on, uh, but it won't be presentable for a long time. And by then, the number of viewers will drop to like 50, right? Because there's probably exactly 50 people in the world who give a damn about the exact geodesics in a Kerr space-time. Uh, and that's 49 if you include me. So, um, so I noticed the viewer count was dwindling a bit. And uh, things we didn't do is I didn't derive the uh, I didn't derive the Schwarzschild metric, but that's a very small thing to miss because literally every GR book derives the Schwarzschild metric, um, uh, and they all do it essentially the same way. My way is a little bit deeper in the sense that I don't immediately assume certain uh, symmetric forms. I show that, uh, for example, I don't assume that it's time independent at the beginning. I, I allow time independent to man itself, manifest itself later. But that's a very small bonus. And there are some books that do it that way. Of course, I learned it from a book that did it that way. So we may return to this if there's like a lot of demand. But I thought I'd go into something new. And I do uh, Lie groups and Lie algebras. And the approach I'm going to take is different in this subject as well. I'm actually going to basically do a reading of this book, Lie Groups, Lie Algebras, and Some of Their Applications. Robert Gilmore's book, let's see, red, I could do it in red. This, I've, re I've got a lot of books on this subject, and I've read a lot over the years on the subject, and I've learned a lot from different sources. But this book, by far, is the most appropriate, comprehensive, it's got good levels of detail, and uh, uh, it covers the entire scope of the subject at a very solid introductory level. And uh, I really like it. So we're going to go through this book as a reading. It's a long book, and I don't know how long this will take, and I'll probably use the same strategy, that as long as the viewer count is high, I'll keep going. So in order to begin this project, this lecture today will just be about the prerequisites. So we are going to talk about what do you need to know to attack this subject, Lie groups and Lie algebras. And um, we're actually, if you've been following along the other lecture series, you're pretty 
close to getting it down, right? For example, one thing that's important is the notion of the manifold. The elementary notion of manifolds is pretty critical here. You can get by without it, but that's what I'm but that's the kind of thing I'm trying to avoid. So starting with manifolds, that's a definite must for the way I'm going to present it. I'm not going to teach about manifolds in this lecture series. I'm going to refer you to previous lectures I did on the subject. So I'm looking at the list here, the list of the what is a manifold playlist, which seems to have 18 videos in it. And the first one, point set topology, important. It's a, it's a light introduction to point set topology. So we definitely want lecture one. Lecture two, the elementary definitions that we use for a manifold, that's actually important too. It's an expansion on topology. Actually, the first few are all about topology. The notion of separation, countability, and continuity. Um, yeah, continuity is critical. So I would say three and four count. And then topological, differentiable manifolds and diffeomorphisms. Yep, that's all part of it. The notion of the tangent space, less than nine, that's good, important. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, basically, you got to know about manifolds here. The cotangent space, fiber bundles, tangent bundles, quotient spaces. So what you probably don't need to get started is uh, less than 11, 12, and 13. So 11, 12, and 13. You don't need those to get started. Um uh, but quotient spaces, less than 14, actually, that's probably actually pretty important in one of the earlier things. But we may actually discuss this in this lecture. So you probably can skip that. And then I stopped on homotopy. So what I would say is basically 1 through 9 in what is a manifold or the equivalent understanding. All right, so... Uh, and this is the kind of material you get in Gilmore's early chapter anyway. He has a chapter basically on mathematical foundations, and it really does include essentially this material. He breaks it up into topology, and then he defines a manifold. I just sort of push it all together into the manifold section. All right, then the other thing you'll need is you'll have, we have to understand, in order to understand Lie groups and Lie algebras, you have to understand groups. Whoops, you have to understand groups and algebras, right? You have to know what those things mean. We're studying a special type of group and a special type of algebra. So understanding what those two mean is pretty important. Now, uh, elementary group theory is always, always taught as discrete groups, right? Discrete group theory, meaning groups are sets and sets have elements. And if you have a finite number of elements, Right, and it satisfies the requirements of being a group, you have what we call a discrete group, a finite group. You really need to know how finite groups work. You need to know all of the elementary under, uh, principles of group theory. You have to understand uh, the nature, the definition of a group, group operations. You have to understand, say, the centralizer of a group. You have to certainly understand how group subgroups work. You have to understand how factor groups work, right? you know, the, uh, the, the group that's created by um, the factor group of G with one of its subgroups, if the subgroup is uh, what's called an invariant subgroup. Uh, so you have to understand the difference between a regular subgroup and an invariant subgroup, or a normal subgroup is what it's called. And the subsequent factor group that you can create uh, using a, a normal subgroup. So those are important things. They're very elementary, and you really shouldn't be here worried about Lie groups and Lie algebras unless you have gotten some familiarity with regular group theory. Um, so uh, with that in mind, uh, that's a critical point. Algebra, uh, the uh, I never covered, by the way, uh, elementary group theory in any of my lectures, so you're going to have to get that out there and make sure you come here with that on your own. Algebras, however, we did talk about, and let me uh, remind myself where, Right, so that material we covered in what is a tensor, and we had two lessons. One was al on algebraic structures. This was lesson 19 and lesson 20. That's probably good enough uh, to get your basics for algebras. If you, if you just take Gilmore's foundation, the first chapter of Gilmore, I better cite Gilmore more precisely, but the first chapter of Gilmore or, covers 
what you need to know about uh, the definition of an algebra. But we do it very thoroughly in lessons 19 and 20 of what is a tensor. It's called algebraic structures. Algebraic structures. And that, that's good. If you know that, that'll be fine. So um, let me, the citation for Gilmore, in case you want to follow along in the actual text, is this. Uh, this is the, uh, I guess, the citation. Lee Groups, Lee Algebras, and Some of Their Applications. Robert Gilmore, uh, published by Dover. My edition is, uh, actually, my edition is, I think, 2005. 2005. And uh, it's just a great book, right? Um, I, I really, I've, I've had it for years. You can kind of see, if you look here, the, the ratty cover. I've been reading, <laughs> I refer to it all the time. Just to remind myself, because as as usual with all this stuff, you learn it, you use a little bit of what you learn, and then you slowly forget it while you do other things in life, and then you remember that you used to know something, so you go back to the book, and as and then you relearn it, <clears throat> you expand your knowledge, you deepen it, you maybe explain it to somebody else, that always helps, and then you just keep doing this ad infinitum, and your book ends up slowly and getting worse and worse and worse. Um, oh, there's some other books out here I have... Uh, this one here, I wonder if that, is, um, uh, this is another really important subject that is uh, is kind of washed over by physicists <clears throat> because we just don't have time to study everything. But this one is absolutely worth digging into. So <clears throat> the applications we're going to be going for is particle physics, right? Particle physics, um, the, or the basically the entire organization of particle physics, the entire foundation of the theory ultimately depends on the notion of symmetries and symmetries are all expressed through these ideas. And you'll notice that there are Lie groups and Lie algebras, right? They're different. My first pass through this when I was very young, when I was younger, <clears throat> was uh, I didn't really make the distinction. I was reading texts about these things, and it says, well, you know, Lie groups uh, formulate symmetries, and then Lie algebras are also attributed to symmetries. And I just assumed it was kind of the same thing. And it took a while before I really understood that the group and the algebra are distinct ideas, of course, tightly bound, but very distinct. And we're going to sort of piece all that apart. Okay, so that's the goal of this lecture series. I hope we generate some interest. If you have more interest, let me know in the comment section here. And uh, otherwise, we're just going to kind of proceed through this book uh, more or less systematically. I'll probably move around a little bit because it is to go straight through it might not be the logical way to do it. But... Anyway, we should get through all of the relevant topics. At a minimum, I want to make sure everybody understands what a Lie group is, how Lie groups are work, what a continuous group is. And then uh, the relationship between Lie groups and Lie algebras are completely critical. And we'll actually go into that in some detail. And then uh, I'll, I'll be using his examples. He's got some fantastic examples in this book, better than I've seen in any other text. And then once we've got a good sense of what, um, or somewhere in the middle there, we'll do some examples and we'll also keep pressing forward. But at some point, we'll talk about Lie algebras specifically and um, how uh, the root spaces work. And the root spaces allow us to uh, start understanding representations of these algebras, matrix representations. And then ultimately, we'll talk about how those matrix representations uh are tied into particle physics. Now, that's where he doesn't quite go into that quite as much. Um, he doesn't quite talk about um, the uh, application to fundamental particle physics, but that's fine because we'll, by the time we get to that, we'll be able to do it. <clears throat> it could be a long haul, but I'm hoping that uh, this subject will generate new interest. Um, and uh, uh, so we'll begin uh, in our next lecture. Thanks.